iOS 16.2 is a massive new update and it's available to download right now. Here is everything that is new. Welcome everybody, welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and Apple has been testing iOS 16.2 for a while now and it contains a ton of new features, new enhancements that I am excited to talk about. This update arrives alongside iPadOS 16.2, tvOS 16.2, there's HomePod update 16.2, we also have an update for Apple Watch, as well as the Mac with macOS Ventura. So get downloading, while you're waiting for stuff to update, I'm gonna walk you through everything that is new in this massive new update, primarily for your iPhone, as well as your iPad, Apple TV, and Mac. The first thing to talk about is the Freeform app. Apple had announced the free format at WWDC alongside its major software updates, but said it would be missing from the launch of iOS 16, and it would be coming at a later date. Well, now it's here. So in 16.2, we have the new free form app. It's free, automatically you can add it to your device. It's a whiteboarding, collaboration, brainstorming type app that gives you a massive canvas that you can add anything you want to. You can draw using your finger or Apple Pencil over on iPad. You can add images, files, sticky notes, shapes, all sorts of stuff and collab with everybody. You can show directly in the Messages app, syncs via iCloud, all super nice. It works on iPhone as well as iPad and Mac as well. Since I mentioned the iPad briefly, I do want to mention that iPadOS 16.2 will bring full external monitor support with Stage Manager to M series iPads. So you'll be able to have different things on your displays, show some stuff on your iPad, other stuff on an external display, if you have a recent enough iPad that can handle this feature. For smart home users, Apple Home has a couple improvements here. First, there is an entirely new HomeKit architecture. This will give you re increased performance, reliability, and speed when controlling your devices, especially when controlling a bunch of them from the app at the same time, much quicker than it was before. This update though, it comes with a big asterisk because it does require that all of your devices are updated. So your iPhones, iPads, Apple TVs, your Mac, your HomePods are all updated to this most recent release before you can move to the new architecture. Additionally, it needs to be all the other homes that you are sharing as well. So you have a family member's home that you are sharing and have access to, that's gotta be updated too before you can update to the new architecture. A little bit of a pain, but the performance has definitely been nice to have. The other thing that I want to mention is 16.2. We're seeing third-party devices finally supporting Matter and working with Apple Home. The first ones are going to be from Eve. They do have new optional updates that are rolling out for the Eve Dorn Window Contact Sensor, the Eve Motion, and the Eve Energy. All those will get this optional Matter update that'll work with Apple Home as well as other services like Amazon's Assistant, Google Home, and Samsung SmartThings. On the lock screen, we have two new widgets available. There's one widget that can show your sleep from the night before. We had sleep widgets on the home screen before. Now they've moved to the lock screen as well. And we have a new medications widget. So you can log your medication directly there from the widget on your lock screen. This will show up as a health widget when you're going to add it to your device. Then if you have an iPhone 14 Pro or iPhone 14 Pro Max, you have new options to customize your wallpaper when it's dimmed or just turn off completely and you have options to hide your notifications or messages from the always on display. iOS 16.2 brings advanced data protection for iCloud users. This is another optional step that you can turn on that'll encrypt almost all of your iCloud backed up data. Things like your iCloud drive files, your photos, your messages, all of this will now be backed up and encrypted inside of iCloud where before it was there and it was protected but it was not fully encrypted like your other health data was. So this is optional. You do need to have restore options turned on for your Apple ID. I've done an entirely video on this topic already. If you wanna go ahead and check that out and learn more about this new security feature. Speaking of features that I've already covered in depth, this update brings Apple Music Sing. It's a karaoke-like feature for Apple Music users that allows you to sing along with your favorite songs. There's new beat-by-beat -beat tracking for lyrics that's help you keep pace with the music as it plays, and you can control the volume of the primary lyrics. So you can turn down those main vocals, allowing you to take the lead in the song while keeping those backing tracks going. 
live activities. Live activities can now have an optional way to refresh more frequently. So this can be turned on on an app by app basis. For example, here in the TV app, I can turn it on so it'll update more frequently, giving you more up-to-date information, though you do take a hit on battery life if you turn this on. The TV app now, by the way, can show live sports scores as a live activity for supported sports and games. And live activities can now apparently be enabled directly from Spotlight. Inside of the weather app, now you can see relevant news stories when you're perusing the weather. So if I'm looking at my local weather and there's a big storm coming in, maybe I'll see a recommended news article that is covering the new storm that is about to hit. So yeah, relevant news stories will show directly in the weather app. If you have ever inadvertently enabled emergency SOS, hitting that button on the side, holding it, whatever, uh, you'll appreciate this. Now when you cancel that, there's a new feedback option to let Apple know that you would hit this inadvertently. This will help Apple train this behavior and hopefully cut down on these false positives, these false um, alerts going on in the future. Game Center has a new activity widget that'll show what your friends are playing and SharePlay now supports multiplayer games while on a FaceTime call. So you can be on a FaceTime call with a group of people all playing the same game together. It's pretty freaking awesome. In the Messages app, you can search specifically for things in photos like dogs or animals, cars, people, babies, anything like that and get more relevant results returned to you. AirDrop will now revert from everyone to only contacts after 10 minutes of inactivity. This is to help cut down on the amount of AirDrop spam that has been going on. If you've ever been on a, a plane, a bus, a subway, and left AirDrop on for everybody and got AirDropped an unwanted, inappropriate photo, you know what I'm talking about, but a lot of people turn on AirDrop for everybody. If they want to receive a file from someone they just met, uh, that's fine, but now it'll automatically revert to just contacts after 10 minutes of not using it. For the Stocks app, there's new sorting options as well as a new widget, and iOS 16.2 apparently brings 5G support for India. So that pretty much covers it. That is everything that is new inside of iOS 16.2, as well as a few things for iPadOS 16.2, TVS 16.2, and the most recent update to macOS Ventura. This is seriously a massive update, new apps with free form, new faster home kit architecture. We have Apple Music Sing, uh, improved data protection and encryption. Just lots of stuff across the board between new features, enhancements, and bug fixes. Let me know down below in the comments what your favorite new feature is, or better yet, let me know on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, stay Stay tuned because I have so many more videos coming your way.